The goal of this video is to go over how we construct an isosceles and an equilateral triangle. In order to construct these types of triangles, you must have an understanding of the following. How do you copy a segment? How do you construct a scalene triangle? And also have an understanding of what the arc is. So first, in constructing an isosceles triangle, we must first be given two segments. So for our purposes, let's construct one segment that's about an inch and a half in length and a second that's about two inches in length. We must also have a reference line and a reference point on the line. First, let's say we're going to use the two inch segment as our base. I'm going to write base next to it. And let's use the inch and a half segment as our leg. I'm going to write leg next to it. It's important to write the name next to the segment so that you don't confuse them. Let's copy the base segment onto the reference line. Now that I have the length of the base locked in, I'm going to copy it onto the reference line. Next, let's measure out the length of the leg. Next, using the leg, I'm going to place the rotating end on top of A, and I'm going to make an arc above the reference line. My goal is to make it in such a way that I know it will intersect with the second point, with the second arc. Using where this arc and the reference line intersect, I'm going to label that point B. That's what I'm going to use as my second point. I'm going to turn the page because it makes my construction a little easier. And again, I'm going to make an arc above the reference line. Where both arcs intersect, similar to how what we did in making a scalene triangle, I'm going to label that point C. That's my third vertex. I'm going to connect a point from A to C and from B to C. Because we have an isosceles triangle, we need to indicate that we do. We have our base segment, and we have our legs, which are congruent. So I place congruency symbols to show that the legs are congruent. To make an equilateral triangle, the process is the same. However, we're only given one segment to use. The reason is, the sides of an equilateral triangle are all the same. So first, let's make one segment that's about an inch and a half in length, make a reference line, and then put a reference point on the line. Using that, let's use the safety compass and let's lock in the length of the first side. Because the side is both what I'm copying onto the reference line and the side, I want to make a large arc. I want to make sure that the arc is above the reference line, but also intersects the reference line. Where the arc and the reference line intersect, I'm going to label that point B. 
I'm going to use D as my second reference point. Again, I'm turning the page because it makes my construction slightly easier. I'm going to place the rotating end on B and make an arc of the exact same length that intersects the first. With both arcs intersect, I'm going to label that point C. Now I'm going to draw a line from A to C and from B to C. Because all three sides of my equilateral triangle are the same, I'm going to put congruency marks to show that they are. Now we have finished constructing an isosceles and an equilateral triangle.